Good morning, buddy. I'm gonna do this thing, have some fun. All right, good job. Howdy guys, I'm Jason, and that's my buddy, Pinto the dog over there. And today in the Auto Edits garage, we're gonna actually do some shock maintenance, and we're gonna use the Power Tanks Shock Boss Nitrogen Kit that I got a little over six years ago. And I wanna talk about the long-term ownership of this thing, and uh, a little bit I'll tell you about running the six-pack shocks. Now, these are the Jeep shocks that I, I've been running for like seven, gosh, it's been a little over seven years. And I'm really happy with all of this right here. So this is a video, I haven't done video in a while, so I thought, oh, this is a really good way to get some practice. I'm getting back out here, and we're gonna start doing videos again. So let's do this. So to catch you up on this particular product, this is the Shock Boss Kit from Power Tanks. Now, I got this six years ago because at the time I had two vehicles that had nitrogen filled shocks. And it's a routine maintenance to once a year or if you are blessed and get to go off-roading a lot, more than once a year, uh, you're gonna need to just top off the nitrogen in your shocks, it's a normal thing. Now, when I initially got my six packs for that first year, this is what Metal Cloaks recommends, is to fill your shocks once a year. So I went and had it, took, took the shocks off to like make it as easy as possible for my one of my local shops, took it in, and they charged $25 per port to fill. Now, the Metal Cloak shocks have two ports, an upper and a lower here. And so that ended up costing 50 bucks per shock. So I'm not uh, offended by that. It's just a fact of the matter. The problem was is that the tech just didn't do it right. It says right on each port, right by the port, you want 150 PSI top and bottom in this thing. And the tech didn't do that. He did them out of whack. And these shocks just have a telltale way of showing you that they're out of whack because the, the body will float up and down. So it was actually kind of frustrating to spend quite a bit of money and then not get the level of, uh, I should say, attention to detail that I would do. So I decided to invest in the kit. Now at the time, this kit was 550 bucks. That was a big spend, but I realized that I had two vehicles with with nitrogen shocks that were going to need the service and i look long term i go like what am i going to do uh for years i'm going to own these vehicles so it just seemed like a worthwhile investment and it has proven to be i'll just do a spoiler alert right now i'm stoked to have invested in this kit uh back then i'm six years in now it has more than paid for itself in just services on these and since i bought this kit six years ago the price has actually gone up a little bit it was 550, now it's 650. So I ordered this kit six years ago, success, great, love it, happy. And five years after that, I order my monster valves. And then I get an email from Tyler going, hey, dude, don't you have a Power Tank Shock Boss kit? We have done an upgrade since you've done yours. So he says, I'm gonna go ahead and send you out one of our new no loss chucks. This is the original one that came with the kit. And then this is the new one that's designed See, this is an aircraft one. This is designed to just be super easy for finger use. I just dig little things like that. Like, I don't expect that, but the fact that he remembered I own this kit, like that's what you, that's the level of care you get when you support these companies. And this is why I will always be a champion for them. Let me run through the last bit of the puzzle to make this work in your garage system. So the real expense here is not just getting this kit, it's getting nitrogen to fill this tank with. And so I had to go down to my local Praxair, that's a welding supply, and I purchased a nitrogen bottle. This is a 55 gallon, what is this? Yeah, 55 cubic feet, sorry. Uh, bottle of this stuff and this was $119 and you just get an exchange program like a propane cylinder and it's like 15 to 20 dollars to get a new a full bottle of nitrogen and this one I've had for several years so those are the real costs so you would have to get the kit and then get a way to fill nitrogen into this bottle to fill your shocks and this is how I've done that so if to me it was 119 bucks more but again still amortized out over all these years so let's move some nitrogen from this little bottle into the body of these shocks.
So we'll go ahead and get started with this shock right here. Now, Metal Cloak wants you to do the nitrogen fill on these things with the shock fully extended. That means you usually have to droop your junk out on your Jeep. Pulling them off the fronts uh, is really easy on that, so that's why I wanted to do this demonstration that way. But it's super, super simple. Now, what we're gonna do is we'll put the new chuck on here, and you can see, yes, this does make this very easy. Now that our chuck is on, we can connect our line. Now, I've seen guys that are super, super cautious and want to purge the atmosphere out of this, and so you could just open the regulator, and then there you go, you've now purged that. I'm not sure that that is necessary, but it seems fun to, to do that. So now we'll close off the needle valve here and we'll go ahead and see, get a reading on the pressure inside the shock. Now by pushing, tightening this down, it's simple as just tightening the, pressing in the Schrader valve and now you have charged this line. The shock is showing about 130 and that in my experience is a normal shock. So that's the loss in just charging this line and filling the gauge. So let's go ahead and fill that. So to me, that actually is an indication that this, this shock was fine, but this is just part of the maintenance of this. So now what I'll do is I'll open up my needle valve here. This thing comes into play in a minute here that's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and put some nitrogen in there. So we'll just go ahead and bump it. So now I've watched a few different guys and uh, Mike Kim, who's like the Fox guru, shock guru, he likes to bump the shock a little over, let the air out here on the regulator, and then sneak the pressure back up and get it to the setting that he wants it to. So, so I'll dial in with this regulator right here. We'll get this thing on up to 150. And it's always good, I find, to let it sit and equalize. I find that there is a little bit of bounce back and forth. So it's good to have some patience right now to watch this and see, watch it settle and then go, go from there. So now we know we have our pressure dead on to Jason specs. And so we'll go ahead and release the, the needle, the valve here by just unscrewing this. So now we know we have that pressure, in my mind, we have that pressure contained in this chamber right here. We're dead on. So now to disconnect this, we'll just use the needle valve, not gonna touch the regulator on this time, and close the needle valve here, and then we could just go ahead and release that. And this chamber is now done. And watch this, if you wanna do that precision thing I was talking about earlier, we'll flip our shock over, attach our chuck to the other chamber. So if you wanted to purge the line, you could do a little purge right now, right before you connect it back up. And now we have it connected. I think that's a bit overkill, but it's kind of a fun thought. So now let's go ahead and check the pressure on this chamber and it shows the exact same amount as this one did when our first check. So this shock wasn't really low, but this is again, how you just stay ahead of that maintenance. So now we don't have to touch the regulator. We should have our exact 150 that we put in the other chamber. We'll open our needle valve and we'll watch this very slowly climb to the exact pressure that we put in this other chamber here. And again, have a little patience, have a sip of coffee, which I will. I'll get some more coffee. And voila, this shock is serviced and done. Everything seems very, very happy. So we release that, we'll close that. Pop our line off here, take our chuck off. I do have to say this thing is quite convenient and does add to the fun factor of this. Here's a suggestion as we get this other shock in the system here. What if you went in on a kit like this with a few of your Jeep or friends or just friends that have nitrogen shocks and you guys split the kit then would meet over at a friend's house every few months and do sh shock charge. Now, really quick, let's talk about the six pack shocks. I've had these, been running these for seven years. I'm really quite happy, quite pleased with these. Now, these six pack shocks aren't for everybody. They're unique because they aren't a traditional shock style, body, tube, that type of thing. It has everything contained in the middle and the benefit of that in this, in this particular package is the fact that you get this interesting, look how small 
that compacts to, that's the full stroke of this shot right here. That's the full travel of this thing. And then you have, this is the 28 inch shock. So you have 28 inch fully extended and 13 and a half inch fully compressed shock in this packaging. So the only downside that I have encountered in these shocks is the fact that they aren't adjustable. I love tweaking and tuning on my shocks. I, being fully honest, would want three more clicks of rebound dampening. The compression, like the actually going over the road, hitting bumps is perfect, just like they are. I wouldn't actually dial that in. I would actually put three more clicks to slow the rebound on these shocks. Now this is seven years ago. I actually talked to the guys at Metal Cloak last year out in Moab at the CTI trailer. By the way, got a 900. Um, and uh, they said that the new stacks are, the engineers had gone that way. They had just found that that had worked better. So my old shocks, is it, it's not even bad enough that I won't even take these and send these up to have them revalved. It's actually really quite good. Now this one I just bled the air out of so I could do that demonstration. And then we can go ahead and do our nitrogen fill. Let's see what this was. It's gonna be zero, see that? So then we'll just go ahead, open our needle valve and it will get our pressure to where we want it to be. See how fun this is? This is a lot of fun. So we have that chamber done. Do the other chamber. And with that, we have just done the front shocks on the Jeep. I will just obviously replicate that for the rears. But that is how fun, easy this is to do. Um, do I recommend adding this to your kit if you have nitrogen shocks? Yeah, don't be afraid of doing stuff like this. This is super fun. And again, make this affordable by either making your own kit or splitting it up with your buddies. How cool is that, right? You have this reason to get together and tinker on your Jeeps. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed that and got a little out of that. It was a fun day for me to get back out in the garage and get ready to do some videos. And uh, for me and Pinto, we'll see you next time down the road. Hope you guys enjoy your drive.